It's a very special place that diamonds occupy in people's hearts. It's all about love. Diamonds are silent witnesses of history. And it connects you to humanity. It's not just mere beauty, it means purity. It means a divine light. I wish they never existed. I wish. There's a diamond that speaks to everyone, and everyone has the chance to be part of the dream. Mohammed Dabo, a 45-year-old miner, is walking to the diamond fields of Koidu in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Sierra Leone is one of the ten largest diamond-producing countries in the world, yet it is one of the world's poorest nations. Mohammed pans for diamonds in the clay murkiness of the riverbed. For his back-breaking labor, he earns less than a dollar a day and a small percentage of what he finds. Most days or weeks or even months, there is nothing. Right now, that feeling, the family, let God give me a big one. Why I go able, responsible for my family. Say so that all now, they pray God for today. One day, God go must give me, he go must provide. Around the world, 24 tons of diamonds are teased from the earth every year. Once mined, they begin a year-long journey through a vast, secretive network of buyers and sellers stretching five continents. Last chance at $860,000. Sold to you, sir. Thank you very much. Battle 178. 520,000 on this aisle. 540,000. $560,000. By the end of their journey, diamonds will adorn women around the world. $70 billion of diamond jewelry is sold each year. 650,000, 680, thank you. $700,000, 720,000, 750,000, $780,000. For thousands of years, men have felt compelled to pursue diamonds for money and power, for the sublime beauty of diamonds. There is something about them that we covet that has made them into a symbol of our worth the measure of a love, and in a passing world, a hint of the eternal. Diamonds are as old as the earth. They were the stuff of myth, meant for the gods and the treasure chests of royalty. It was not until the 20th century that the De Beers Corporation made diamonds for all and forever. Hi, everybody! Guess oh. what? <laughs> that must have set you back a bit. Not really. Back two months' salary. Yeah. Not much for something that's forever. For over a hundred years, De Beers controlled the supply of diamonds and the diamond message. Mass advertising campaigns transformed diamonds from an exclusive luxury item to something everyone desired as an essential token of love. For the only other person in the world, a diamond. A diamond is forever to be. Good afternoon, JWT. J. Walter Thompson is the exclusive advertising agency for De Beers. It's all about love. We're not really marketing a product. What we're marketing is a form of communication. What he wants to say and what she wants to hear. Richard Lennox is the director of the Diamond Account. We're selling a, a, emotion and, and a way for a man to most eloquently express 
way he feels about the person that he loves more than anyone else in this world. And we're constantly trying to find a way of making that seem fresh. We have to continue to feed the flame of diamonds. To make the unnecessary indispensable, the marketing team at JWT creates a new ad campaign every year. This year, it's the Journey Diamond. The manufacture of desire does not come cheap. The campaign will cost $50 million. As usual, it's about love, represented this time by two dandelions. The opening scene is huge gust of wind hits, and this untouched field of dandelion seeds is tossed into the air. We eventually focus on just two dandelion seeds that are together. We're going to follow their journey together in this commercial. They're caught in an updraft. One of the seeds starts to spin, but the other one keeps its pace, the way some people spin in a relationship. There's more going on here than just two dandelion seeds floating. You know. And one of the dandelion seeds might get stuck right here in a branch. At that moment, you're like, oh, is that one going to be left behind? But this one will unfree itself and catch up with the other seed. And at that moment, we kind of switched the emphasis from the seeds to these people. Journey is really a, a very simple thought. It's, it's this idea, of, it's the path that we take together. It's the journey that we've taken together that makes our love grow stronger. Once you've arrived at that simple idea, then what we had to do is find beautiful designs that were an expression of that thought. I think we want a piece that is sort of iconic enough so that it's clearly going to communicate journey but at the same time has something fun to it. This one is the one that tested the best with consumers, right? They found this really It tested feeling. really well. It's very simple. So no one can get confused of what the concept is really about. You know, going towards the bracelets. I mean, I really like these pieces over here because this clearly shows mm -hmm. a journey idea. And I think bracelets are so great because it's an opportunity for retailers to increase, you know, the average price. Like, yep. there's a good opportunity to sell a lot of diamonds there, which is great. Yep, yep. that's good. But square cut or pear shape, these rocks don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. The most famous diamond merchant in the world, of course, is De Beers. So why was De Beers successful? The next generation of business leaders is getting a lesson from former J. Walter Thompson ad executive Alan Middleton in how to market a product. A brilliant writer wrote the line, a diamond is forever. It was named the slogan of the century. And I think you can see why. A diamond lasts forever, and that's what I want my relationship to be. Brilliant line. Absolutely brilliant. Anybody always says, doesn't marketing create needs? Answer, no. De Beers did not create the need when two people got together to share something. That's deep in our culture and deep in our humanity. But what it did is direct it so it should be diamonds rather than other things. Won't you join me? They put a lot of product placement. They were one of the earliest marketers to understand that when somebody like Marilyn Monroe sings Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, this isn't a bad plug for diamonds. I just love finding new places to wear diamonds. Anything that touched romance, De Beers would be there with their public relations machine trying to get it involved. Roll, please. And action. With the arrival of television, De Beers' commercials reached millions more. Hey, hey. the airport shut down. You've got to be kidding me. You know what? I love you, and Merry Christmas to you. Today, 85% of American marriages are consummated with a diamond. Slowly, look at it. Wow. It's a secret, just to yourself, just to yourself. i got to do something about this. i got to get it to this woman. We sell emotion. And providing the messages that we send and the stories that we tell remain true to real human truths, then I think we, we have a good chance of being successful. All right, let's do it again, guys. There is a diamond in the world for everyone.
Most of Sierra Leone's diamonds are mined by hand, so anyone with a shovel, a bucket, and a sieve can become a digger. The diamonds they find, they must hand over to the landowner. It's the owner who decides what they are worth and how much the digger will get to keep. This is my land. I'm the owner. If there was a big diamond found today, this is mine. This is mine. Yeah. God said, I'm the owner. Then go to Panate, the rich and sound. Sunday, some party day from uh, Monday to Grabu. When you clear the Grabu, you pack up. Pack up one place. When you pack up, you find sicker. Sicker for us. So, now I could defend her. To the sicker back court, it's enough damage. For Nature, it's simple. Why the kid in a big one at the sea and center, we sell the material together at the sea and lake. There are virtually no jobs in Sierra Leone, so most young men have no choice but to dig for diamonds. They are at the losing end of a system that makes millions for the few at the top and the barest subsistence for them. The value of the diamond, no, no, finally. Because we'll be going there and when they tell we say, who are the dickers? We'll not say, yeah. And I'll be a belief in it. Yes. But the, no, the value I know of and say, this is the give me money. Only two, eh? Yes. This lady, man, is saying that slavery, ah, yeah? But no way. Who said it? The discovery of diamonds in Canada's north in 1991 started a stampede of the world's leading diamond hunters into the barren lands. Chris Jennings was one of them. I've explored for every mineral you can think of, but to me the one that, that I really enjoy the challenge of trying to find is, is diamonds. It just has something that is so different and so unique and so beautiful, I think. The, the fire, the brilliance, it's just like catching a, a drop of sunlight. It wasn't long before Jennings found the telltale signs of diamonds. He pleaded with his employer to put up the $100,000 he needed to stake a claim. They turned him down. Soon after, another mining company moved in. The Diavik mine, worth $9 billion, now sits on the land Jennings wanted to claim. It's one of the richest mines in the world. Jennings keeps looking. That was when I said, enough now, let's form a company and let's uh, try and do it ourselves. And my feeling is, yeah, it's terrible that we missed it. Let's find the next one. Diamonds are as ancient as time. Under great pressure and heat, Carbon was transformed into diamonds deep within the Earth. Millions of years ago, volcanic eruptions pushed them towards the surface in funnel-shaped pipes. Billions of years ago, although there are 6,000 known pipes around the world, only a few dozen contain enough diamonds to make mining profitable. Finding the minerals that indicate the presence of these pipes is the first step in finding diamonds. The statistical chance of finding a kimberlitic mineral here amongst the billions of grains are very, very remote. You can't afford to lose one indicator 
of a diamond source. Dedication and perseverance. We take thousands and thousands of samples in the field and for every 20, 25 kilogram bag we collect, that costs us a full thousand dollars. We have to make sure that we don't lose a single, single grain. One grain lost in a hundred million could lose us a mine. It's a tightrope that we walk all the time. We've nearly run out of, very close to running out of money, uh, three times, probably. probably. Three times, yeah. yeah. It's tough. Jennings has traveled the globe for over 40 years in his quest for diamonds. He's 72 years old, and time is running out. I do want to make a discovery. Of course I do. The satisfaction of, of achieving a discovery is huge. I don't want to go and uh, sit down and play golf in Florida for the rest of my life. It would be terribly boring. <laughs> That's where the cliff is, the bottom of the rainbow. Just right on this island here, then. <laughs> In just one decade, Canada has become the fourth largest diamond producer in the world. It turned Yellowknife, the capital of the Northwest Territories, into a boom town. The people who live on the land where diamonds are found rarely profit from them. But in Canada, multinational mining companies had to negotiate historic agreements with the Aboriginal people for the right to exploit the diamond wealth of the land. The agreements they reached guaranteed the native groups jobs and financial compensation. Chief Floyd Sangris of the Yellow Knives Dene was one of the negotiators. The diamond mine companies were knocking on our doors. They wanted access, they wanted to get to the uh, resources. We, in some way, supported mines industry coming here because they create jobs. The whole thing I'm trying to work on is, is to make life comfortable, make their life easier uh, more than before. You get yourself a new vehicle, maybe a mortgage in the house, makes their uh, future brighter. For the first time since he signed his people's agreement with the mining company, Chief Sangris is traveling with a group of Dene elders to visit the Diavik mine located on their land. We allow them to go ahead with their project, providing that they, uh, they provide the maximum benefits. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go see. During the few weeks in winter when the ice on the lakes is thick enough, thousands of trucks haul supplies up the ice road. It's the diamond mine's lifeline. When the builders went to road, they followed the old Dalton trail and, and plodded through. It follows the uh, traditional trails, Yelna's Dene. And uh, these, these trails are about thousands of years old. And our people used it for hunting, traveling, and trading. Eh? Today is different. We live in a fast-paced world. So there's a, there's a life change that's happening. The diamond mine sits right on my territory, so... I expect a good welcome. They don't own the land. This is not Africa, this is northern Canada. Uh, this is a lot. See, huh? Some corn are planted, you see, huh? You see? You see? Uh, you can't see self, you see? How they, 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 they draw? See, huh? See, they're born here all. 
This is a spring mantra, a spring. This is the first house where they were born here in this town. The first house since first attack, they born it. In 1991, Sierra Leone was plunged into a brutal 11-year civil war. It began as an uprising against a corrupt government, but quickly became a war about who would control the country's most important resource, diamonds. Arms and mercenaries for the warring sides were paid for in diamonds. The rebels had their mines, the government had its. The world came to know them as blood diamonds. Millions of innocent victims were caught in the crossfire. Tens of thousands were murdered or had their limbs hacked off. The war is over, but memories are long. Stories are still told as a testament to the dead and to heal the pain of the living. The first attack on Aya, na Konoya, we did our little Aya net to it, boom, 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 boom. Then grown more come between her. They say, hey, then people then don't come, then they kill. They say, they know they left nothing. Anybody they meet and they kill you. Then go all one one cool. Now, what a side they then couch, I ya. Then one fire and I ya. Now, all they gone. Now, then put inside land over. Then kill her. Now, road here, then kill her. As soon as they take her, we say, well, a lot of firm place for her for all better. The land over go turn, be a the pan can. It can't walk scatter. Now, then say, well, now, we know they do doing nothing. But this man for now better. The whole town will go kill on our all, will go burn the whole house. So we say from. To my family all, Papa, oh, Mama, oh, Piki, oh, my wife, oh, all. Go to Nyakwa, then they be here we now. Motoka, when he here, in addition to Motoka, he said, Fudo, he here, and now, Pipi, now there. We all go inside Busu. God, then they pull you in at their hand no more. God. The diamonds which sustained Sierra Leone's long civil war are still here. They could underwrite another war, or they could be the country's greatest hope. from the beginning been cloaked in secrecy, at least until Martin Rappaport came along. He published a price list for diamonds coming to market. Buyers could, for the first time, see what a fair price was. For a brief time, the bottom dropped out of the business. Many had profited from secrecy. Rappaport had his life threatened, and for two years, he had to wear a bulletproof vest. His latest mission is to ensure that the diamond miners of Sierra Leone, like Mohammed, receive fair wages. The damning question facing the diamond industry is, if a billion or two dollars worth of diamonds came out of Sierra Leone, why are there no wells? Why is there no water? Why are there no schools? You took out the assets, you put nothing back in. 
How's it going, guys? Let's go. We have to begin. If we don't take care of these one million diggers in Africa, then we are lowlifes. Once a year, the Diamond World gathers in Las Vegas for one of the largest jewelry trade events in the world. Rappaport is here to convince the who's who of the Diamond World why they should join in his mission. Hear ye, hear ye. Welcome, everybody. Ethics is about doing the right thing. Are we only interested in selling more diamonds, folks, here in this room? Or is it the problem of a million people in Africa? Angola, Congo, Sierra Leone, countries that are really messed up. And diamonds have played a very important role in the messing up of these countries. Today, people in Sierra Leone are the poorest people in the world, and we're using their diamonds, and they are suffering. World's poorest people. The United Nations says so, OK? Is our diamond dream their diamond nightmare? Is our symbol of love their symbol of exploitation? Is that what's really going on here? Do we give a damn? I'm asking that question right here and right now. What about the people? We're people business, right? Now, I have an idea. It's one idea. There may be other ideas that are better ideas. Get ready for this. Fair trade jewelry as a product category. Think about it. You give a woman a ring, and you say to her, this ring has made the lives of people better. And you want to tell me that you guys can't sell that? You can sell the hell out of it. We don't sell utility. We don't sell sneakers that let you bounce around. We sell the idea behind the product. And this idea is beautiful. You know what I'd like to do? The net effect of the diamonds in Africa is to move money from the richest people in the world to the poorest. The problem is, that, that distribution, that pipe, has been corrupted. It's leaking. The money's not getting to the people it's supposed to. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fix that pipe somehow. I may fail here. And, you know, I'd say that the odds are against me. But it's still, I, I'm going to do it with God's help. I believe that I'm going to be able to accomplish this. So, yeah, I'm... I'm pretty good at taking long odds, but I have an idea. I have a dream. Down the hall from Rappaport, the J. Walter Thompson advertising team is launching its dream. Love isn't a linear path, but it has ups and downs. It has twists and turns and it has trials and tribulations. We're going to tell you the story of two dandelion seeds. Yes, that's what I said, two dandelion seeds. What are you doing the rest of your life? North and south and east and west of your life. I have only You spend it all with me. Always. We're lucky to be part of a business of love and emotion. But that's not enough. It takes a plan to give consumers a need, a desire to go out and buy something that no one actually needs to have. Well, diamonds are a necessity in people's lives. And we together have made them so. General Carter Clark is a West Point man. He's also the owner and founder of Gemesis Corporation. The general wants to be part of the business of love, but he's doing it in a very different way. He makes diamonds in his factory. What took nature millions of years, the general does in just four days. 
We're bringing them one of the most gorgeous materials in the world, a diamond. It just so happens this diamond is made by man. The Beers has always said a diamond is forever. A diamond is forever. But a diamond mine is not forever. And the mines are not keeping up, and the new mines are not being discovered fast enough to keep up with the demand. The opportunity is extraordinary, and we're going to fill that gap. As we start the machine, it comes up to pressure. We introduce electricity and water to replicate the natural process, as if this diamond was being grown hundreds of miles underground. We basically have a, a mini version of the Earth. This is what it looks like at the end of four days. Our stones, each one grows individually in this growth chamber that we have. We have absolutely no idea the exact size is going to come out, the shape is going to come out, the color is going to come out. We like this because it makes us distinctive. It makes each diamond stand on its own. Some lucky lady's going to get it. <laughs> I could talk about jewelry forever. It's my passion. <laughs> you know, it, it's so romantic. It's love. It's exciting. It's everything that makes a spirit joyful. I mean, it sparkles when you enter a room. It sparkles. And here is a yellow diamond. That's a natural one. Around here, we call this BG, before Genesis. I think this was before the general even thought of Genesis. Hey, Claudia. How are you? Claudette Krieger is a diamond grader at Genesis. It's amazing. You know, he's such a visionary. He is actually changing the whole world of diamonds. This is just the beginning of it. One day, my dream is to see jewelry like this gorgeous, spectacular jewelry being made with our culture diamonds. We're going to pave the world in diamonds. <laughs> That's my dream. <laughs> Absolutely. I build these magic diamond machines. <laughs> That's what my daughter called them. Ultimately, our goal is to have this place at about 220 machines by the end of this year. And if the general says we're going to have 220 machines, by God, we're going to have 220 machines by the end of this year. <laughs> oh, amazing. there you're something out. Discipline is the key to any business. It's the key to any operation. It's the key to almost anything you do. And certainly West Point and the uh, military teaches you discipline, teaches you to be able to follow orders as well as give them properly. And that's been very, very helpful in the uh, endeavor that I've undertaken. I, I believe in this product. I really, really do. We're going to take over the world with this here. Forget about it. <laughs> what is the beers going to do about that? Forget about the beers. They're going to be working for us. <laughs> <laughs> The De Beers Corporation is worried about the General's Diamonds. At their London headquarters, they've set up what they call a consumer confidence program to make sure that everyone understands the General's Diamonds are not the real thing. You'll see that, you know, for example, in this one, there are little black spots as you look at it. These are like little fingerprints that make this diamond absolutely unique. But that's a million dollars sitting in your hand right now certainly has a mystique to it. You know, that sort of puts hairs on the back of my neck to have a million dollars in, in one hand, one palm. And, you know, quite frankly, if I said to you, well, actually, that came out of a factory two days ago, um, I'm not sure exactly what its value is, it's not going to do the same. But if it looks very much the same, it's, it's crystallised carbon, uh, whether they're diamonds or synthetics, uh, do you think it's going to matter to the consumer? Nobody wants to, to buy a diamond uh, and find out that actually it was a piece of glass uh, or something like synthetic. What they want to know is that they're buying the real thing because real things have real emotion. And I guess the question to yourself is, you know, if, if tomorrow someone was to come to you, your boyfriend, and say, you know, here you are, darling, and, you know, this is about getting engaged, would you be happy with a, a piece of synthetic or a piece of mozzanite or one of these other things? Um, I'd say goodbye to that man. Because I think I'm, I'm worth more than a piece of glass. Why should a glass be symbolic of, of how he really feels? If he truly loved me, then oh. he would buy me the real thing. 
You wouldn't buy me a fake. Just like to demonstrate our frontline uh, screening instrument. And you'll see it's very if you can't tell operate, the difference between a De Beers diamond uh, press, and one uh, of the General's factory-made diamonds, you can check it with Diamond Sure, courtesy of De Beers. So it's very simple to test whether this um, is the real thing, the net. I'm not looking. We'll just, no, who's, I, don't, I don't know who's more nervous here. <laughs> we place it onto the probe and you press the key here. So you've got to really then pick out the one or two percent of synthetics, and that's where this instrument um, comes in. And then with a couple of, within a couple of seconds, it comes out with the result. Oh, excellent. And that's a pass. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. So, so that can, you can be confident that that's, that that that's the real thing and your marriage is good. secure. <laughs> the Bears is not going to dictate diamond production in America. They're worried about competition, right? Period. All this talk about, oh, the consumer is going to be misled is a bunch of baloney. I have complete confidence in the consumer. They love this stone, and they will wear it. This is the only diamond mine in America. It's a virtual mine. Our mine happens to be above the ground rather than below it. What a great opportunity. What else in the world would you rather make than a diamond? We will be successful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It cost over a billion dollars and took 10 years to develop this real mine. When the diamonds run out in 15 years, the Diavik mine will be taken down and sold for scrap. Still by then, the company which runs the mine will have earned a handsome $4 billion profit. After a two-day trip up the ice road, Chief Floyd Sangris and the Dene elders enter the mine site. Here, the company makes the rules. Now the security is going to bring us through. We just need all the guns for now. We've got to put them in a the trailer. They're asking me to uh, bring my ammunition and my rifle in. And these companies are not government. They don't have laws or legislation. And they're in violation of my treaty rights to turn my rifle in at their camp. But we'll follow the rules for the time being. They all don't like it. I'm gonna go get myself a nice caribou on the way back. Hey. Coming in? Yeah. Yeah, let's get you to throw your bags on oh. and your orange garments and we'll fix your hands First. During your visit, you may notice certain areas of the site are off-limits. My hat? Yeah. My hat. Even my gloves. Even my jacket. My chief's jacket. The company reserves the right to carry out searches of personal belongings. What might seem at first glance like an innocent souvenir could turn into an unfortunate incident. Yeah, they have quite a bit of uh, policies and regulations here. While on site, please obey all signs and instructions you may receive from supervisory personnel and your host. It's the business. That's what it is, I guess. Make it happen. It's the only way you get in. Yeah. The security part is kind of a... Uh, I don't feel comfortable with that. Have a seat and have a look at the camera right over here. Okay. Give us a smile. Oh, that's not a smile. Thank you. Okay. This whole place is built right on my home. But it's a strange world, different world. You can't go anywhere yet until okay. security shows up. Okay. So um, they're on their way. There is another rule that applies to visitors at the Diabic site. Don't touch. Since this is a diamond mine, it is very important that our visitors do not pick up anything they might see lying on the ground anywhere on site.
I don't know where young people would be today if it wasn't for the industry coming up north. You know, 25 years ago, a lot of my people were uh, were on welfare, social uh, welfare. Two chiefs very often. Uh... So, you guys, we're driving along the dike that was constructed out into the lake right now. When we finish mining, we're going to let the holes fill back up with water, and the fish can come back in, and then we've created all this fish habitat for them to lay their eggs. It took a billion years to create this earth, and you're saying you're guaranteeing us that this environment will come back to natural? to where it is and it's going to spawn and everything you told me. Yes, yeah, the, the fish will come back in and spawn and that's on the... Uh... So you're the second coming then. Smoke. My father passed that on to me to uh, protect the land as much as possible, and I'm still trying to do that. But it's a very hard world, right? It's a changing world. Myself, I'm kind of in the middle, from the old ways and the new way. I'm, I'm right in the middle, you know, I'm balancing it. But it's, it's a tricky, it's a very tricky. Because if, if one is too strong, then... Uh, you're lost. You're no longer what you are. Probably have to uh, ask the creator for forgiveness for such a destruction. But it's all for that little thing called diamond. Unbelievable. Martin Rappaport is going to succeed in his dream of fair wages for the diamond miners of Sierra Leone. He'll have to enlist the support of the country's power brokers. Let's walk over that way here. Today, he's hosting a visit from the chief of one of the diamond regions in the country, Mohammed Benya V. My thinking is, number one is, I'm going to try to figure out a way to create fair trade diamonds. But it's complicated. I want to make fair tri trade diamonds work, and I listen to all these NGOs bullshit with each other, we'll never get anywhere. If I build a consensus and say, okay, we agree these are fair trade or development diamonds. We agree these standards. Because if I'm going to invest in Sierra Leone and I don't see any goods, I just see a bunch of people with shovels, I'm going to get screwed. But if I see diamonds, so now I'm not just putting money into Sierra Leone to dig up dirt, I'm specifically buying specific diamonds, there's a better chance that we can have an impact. Now let me keep quiet a little okay. and let you talk. Because of the level of poverty, when I talk to most of them, all they are concerned about is what is available today. They don't look at it from a long-term point of view. I mean, they need a bag of rice, whatever they can get, so that they can purchase the bag of rice, that's it. So my the question here is, how do we get all these people on the same page? I thought about it, I thought about it. Yeah. What we need to do is think about using not political power, not NGO power, okay. economic purchasing power. Okay? So I say like this. I don't want to buy diamonds from people who are screwing the diggers. So I have a condition. I'll only come and buy if I know that you, Mr. Dealer, are not screwing the digger. You're giving him a fair thing. I think it'll have big benefits. And not only that, yeah. I think it'll attract people like a magnet. We're going to make a market. Everybody look at this camera, please. This is the shot, Jimmy. One more, one more, one more. Sierra Leone in Africa is the most difficult place in the world. God put those diamonds in Sierra Leone for a purpose. And maybe the purpose was to challenge us. When I was there in the war, and I went to the amputee camp, and I saw this, this baby, Maria, and a guy was next to her, and he's saying, see what, what they did to us, see what they did. Tell them, 
Tell them what they did to us. And I just felt like, you know, no one knew, no one cared, no one. It was unbelievable. And I said, you know, if I can do something that makes the difference, then I should do it. I've been land book, like I'd work in the office. And they gave me salary for the year. Once go down marker, you can have the fit land. They're picking them. I got three girls, four boys. I will say they mean no land book, but I let me pick in the land. But mine, I'm not allowed there because me no land book. There, I don't get a small idea, I don't know what's in a book. Look, I'm managing no more. Mm -hmm. In this idea, so say it's in, it's in, it's in for that any time. I mean, pick in the day, I don't know. Now outside they make naba, na me family problem they solve naba, or na me picking the school business, or na the job business. I need to me hat, you know the rest. So right now na that feeling they permit let God give me big one, where I go able responsible for my family. <laughs> I do find I pin me foundation. Will you give me big one myself? I don't get. Finally, see because now then they make I, I be somebody back. Because once a life day, any chance is available for me. Now this world. Now the fena. Next time on Diamond Road, we'll travel with Martin Rappaport to Sierra Leone to see if his dream will withstand the reality on the ground. We'll enter the world of high-end diamonds in New York City, where million-dollar diamonds abound. We'll go to South Africa, the birthplace of the modern-day diamond story and home of the Nama people, who are fighting to reclaim the diamond lands that were taken from them.